Hi everyone, um, just making this video to demonstrate my basic um, everyday sourdough method. Um, this is a method that's a really easy recipe, it's really adaptable and this is also the method that you can, that I demonstrate how you use non-stick baking paper to um, just to make it easier to transfer the dough and bake it in a Dutch oven to get really good results. Okay, so my basic recipe is three cups of flour. I mix it up all the time, but today I'm going to do two cups of plain flour. So this is these are half cup measures, so that's one and that's two. Um, one cup of whole wheat. This is very finely ground whole wheat atta, so it's Australian grown um, Indian style whole wheat flour, stone ground. Um, I'm going to put a little touch of rye in just because I love rye, just for flavour. Um, sesame seeds because we love sesame seeds. What else? I'm basically putting all of the dry ingredients in. I'm using one teaspoon of salt. I just um, crush the, the lumps. Okay, now that's all of the dry ingredients. So I'm just going to stir those up. Just with a spoon. Make sure that everything's mixed in really well. Actually, I'm going to add a spoon of um, psyllium husk, which increases the fibre, but also um, does wonders for the texture of this bread. I've been experimenting with it lately and it's, it's great. So there we go, three cups of flour, one teaspoon of salt, a few little additions, sesame seeds, a little bit of psyllium husk. That's all mixed in really, really well. I generally make a little well in the center. Then I put in my water. So I'm using um, filtered water that I've just had storing in the fridge because it's spring here and it's coming along to summer and the days are getting hot and I find that if my ingredients are cold to begin with, it reduces the risk of my dough over fermenting. So um, this recipe generally takes one to one and a quarter, one and a third cups of water um, and that makes a fairly high hydration dough. Don't ask me what the actual hydration is. I gave up calculating that stuff years ago. Um, this is my starter. I just keep it in a mason jar. I just put it in a clean jar this morning because it overflowed in the fridge last night. So that's, whew, that's probably at least a cup and a half. I don't measure it. I just pour in most of what I have in my jar. So probably at least a cup. And I leave about that much left in there. So probably a tablespoon, two tablespoons. So I'll, I'll show you what I do with my starter too. Okay, so I've got the flour, water and the starter. I just use a spatula knife and just loosen up the starter in the water. I find this is really easy. I only have to use one bowl. There's no kind of mucking around. And then I just use the knife to just I guess like a dough, woo, like a dough hook, I guess. A little bit of spillage there, never mind. Um, and just, it really cuts through everything really well. Um, so you're not, you're getting your starter really well distributed. So yeah, just kind of cut that around. I can already see that I want that wetter because I like hydration, high, Hydration doughs, I don't know why, I just find them easier to mix, I guess. And they make really beautiful bread. So, a bit more water. I'm going to say goodbye to the knife now and get my trusty spatula. This plastic spatula I've had for so long, it cost me $2 at Kmart. I wish I could find more because it's so good for mixing this dough scraping down the sides. 
If you don't have one of these, you can use a plastic dough scraper. That works pretty well. But as you can see, I'm kind of kneading. That's still a little too firm for me. Um, I like my dough to be quite squidgy. So I'm probably up to about a cup and a half of water now, but that's okay. Um, that's quite, oh, quite stiff. But you can see there's lots of water kind of pooling around the bottom. So that's pretty much it. That's the initial mix. I'll just leave that now for half an hour or so while I get ready for work. Um, cover it with a plate and I will give it another turn before I go off to go to work for the day. I'm back. I just realised I didn't show you all what I do with my starter once I've mixed my dough. So the dough's mixed. Put that aside. So I have a little bit of starter left in its jar. All I do is, and this is a pint size jar. So I generally half fill the jar, usually about five teaspoons. This is not even bread flour, this is just all purpose flour. Honestly, it doesn't matter that much. Um, that was four, I think. <laughs> Um, I have this thing about putting a touch of rye and everything. It just adds a little bit more oomph to your starter. And then I kind of fill it with water. Not quite to the top. I find that um, I like to keep my starter pretty wet because it stops it from overflowing. If it's quite a wet mix, as it um, carbonates, the carbon dioxide generates in the starter as it ferments, if it's very thick, like a, a thick batter or a dough, it rises and it overflows. But if you make it quite wet, um, the bubbles just rise up through the batter rather than actually raising it. So I add a fair bit more water. Um, but you can keep your starter any way you like. You can um, use a bigger jar than I'm using. And um, so really mix it in really well. I generally like to scrape the sides and make sure I get all of the original starter off the bottom. So that's pretty runny. I don't think much is gonna, I don't think that's gonna overflow at that consistency. It's gonna be really nice and bubbly. This is a clean cloth. <laughs> it might not look it, but it is. So I just clean that. I also try to scrape down the sides with a spatula just to make the sides really clean. I think um, I think that helps to um, prevent any more. And then I just use a canning um, lid or half the lid without the screw top. That way it's got some, it can just, you know, pop up. So it just sits there. So I will now put the starter and the dough away for the day. I will come back before I go to work and just give this another turn or two. Um, but then it'll go away for the day. I'll probably put it in the cooler box because it's probably going to be warm today. So just like an esky um, cooler box that you would normally put drinks or something in. I'll just put these in there with, the, with just one uh, cooler brick and that will keep the temperature to about 18, probably about 18 degrees by the end of the day, by the time it melts. Um, and that will stop it from over fermenting. Okay. Okay, hi everybody, I'm back. It is... It's 6.30 at night. Um, I've been at work all day. The dough has been fermenting during the day in my cooler box in an esky. Um, it's pretty well risen. It's a little bit jiggly, not too much. Um, some nice air bubbles in there. 
it's it's a fairly wet dough as you saw this morning so um, if I had have left that out at room temperature today it would probably be a lot higher but it would also be a lot closer to being over fermented which we don't want it's better to keep the dough on a really long bulk ferment like that a little bit cooler so that it um, doesn't go too far because if it goes too far the gluten breaks down and then you lose the, the structure of the bread um, another alternative to putting it in a cooler box for the day, you might not have the room to have a cooler box in your house, is you can just put your dough um, in its bowl with the lid and you can just put a couple of cooler bricks on top like that. Um, sometimes I have also wrapped a towel around it, that just helps keep some of the cool in. Again, start with cold ingredients, that helps as well. Um, I will say though that this is my strategy in summer and in the warmer days of spring, obviously in winter, I do not do this, I just leave it out. I don't want it to be slowed down in winter, I want it to be sped up a little bit, if anything. Okay, so the dough is fermented. To get it ready to bake, I'm gonna bake this tonight. The first thing I do is just give it a quick sort of fold uh, knead down. I'm not gonna fold it with my hands, I'm just, this is the quick, easy method. So I'm just gonna use my trusty plastic spatula. So I just kind of um, grab it from the sides and pull it up. It's a little bit like a stretch and fold method. I don't push it too much. Um, I do kind of, I don't want to knock all the air out of it. The main um, part about this is just kind of giving it a bit of a need to really wake, wake up the gluten. Okay, so I am pushing air out of it, but that's okay. So I just do that, go around, sort of bringing it into a uniform kind of a dough ball. And um, I'll leave that now just for five or ten minutes and then I'll come back and do the next step. Okay. So just while we're waiting for the dough to just relax a little bit before I do my final shape, I just wanted to show you my starter before I put it back into the fridge. So this is the starter that um, I took out of the fridge this, mo this morning to mix with this dough and refed it and then it has been fermenting alongside the dough in the cooler box all day today. Um, it was quite a runny starter as you'll remember and you can see it's very very bubbly very active, quite runny, um, really nice and frothy, so that's good to go. So what I'll do now with that is just put that in the fridge till next time. That's all I do, very easy. So, good night Boris. Okay, so it's only been about five minutes, but I'm impatient. Um, and it's a work night and I wanna get the bread done. So I'm going to go to the next stage. So this dough, I'm going to be baking in this Dutch oven. Um, and sometimes, plenty of times, I would shape this dough and put it, in, it into a floured um, banneton. And I would then use that um, to, to hold the dough and then put it into the um, Dutch oven from there. In this video, I want to show a really quick and easy and clean way to do it without the banneton, so there's no flour involved. It's very neat, easy, no clean up, um, and it's a nice little trick for just making a really good, decent loaf of sourdough midweek without any fuss. So, what I do is I just get some non stick baking paper in Australia, that's what we call it, um, in the States or in other places. I'm pretty sure this is referred to as parchment paper. So this is just non-stick baking paper. Um, so I just grab a piece that is um, big enough for the dough. I've got another little bowl that I'm gonna use to, to um, put the dough in. Sometimes I use my banneton that doesn't have any flour in it. Just any shape that is gonna be a good shape to um, hold the dough as it proves will be fine. So I'm just gonna use this this time. Now this is a really good trick. If you spray the paper with some water, the dough is not going to stick to it. And I'll show you why that's helpful in a second. 
So just coming back to the dough now, I'm just going to do a final shaping and you'll see I'm not going to even do this on the bench, I'm just going to do it in the bowl just because it's such an easy way to do it. So just giving it another round and as you can see I'm really just gently putting some tension into the surface of the dough and pulling it together. Bringing it into a ball, basically. And then with my wet baking paper, I'm just gonna tip it out and that's it. It's not perfect, but I'm not a baker, so I don't care. Sometimes I might just get my wet hands a bit and just sort of tuck it under. But look, I'm happy with that. That's going to rise beautifully. It's got enough tension in there for me um, for it to get a good oven spring. So it just goes into its bowl or its dry banneton or whatever you've got. Now see this. This is where the wet paper really comes in handy. Because I sprayed that paper, it's not sticking to the dough, well, very little anyway, tiny little bit. So I'm pulling that up, I'm going to use my spatula just to sort of smooth out or press those seams. This is much easier because um, the paper is wet, so it hasn't kind of stuck to the dough. So that's it. So I'll just let that prove now, depending on the weather. Um, sometimes on a really hot day, and especially if the dough hasn't been fermented at a cool temperature and it's just I've just done it in um, a shorter amount of time on a hot day, I will turn the oven on to preheat at this stage because sometimes hot weather, this will be ready to go in the oven in half an hour. That's it. Um, because this dough is a bit cool, it's been in the cooler box all day, I'm thinking that's going to take maybe at least an hour, so I'm just going to cover it up with the plate again, leave that and just come and check on it maybe in half an hour's time and at that point put the oven on to preheat and we'll be ready to go. Okay, come back in half an hour or so. Okay, so it has been half an hour that the dough has been um, doing its final prove. It's not quite there yet. You can see it's it is a little bit larger um, and it's got a little bit of a wobble to it so it's getting there. I'm going to preheat the oven now and um, set the timer for another half an hour and I think that'll be pretty much perfect. Okay so see you in half an hour. Okay so it has been another 40-45 minutes, so um, one hour and 15 minutes total proving time. The oven, been at, the oven has been preheating to 230 degrees Celsius for 30 minutes, or actually over 30 minutes, about 45 minutes now. Um, so the dough is, is pretty well proved. I would actually like it to be a little bit um, bigger than that, and a little bit full of proof but it's getting late and I um, really just want to get it done now so what I'm going to do is get it ready for the oven okay this is how I how I do it I'm just going to get the Dutch oven out of the oven and put the dough in and we'll be right to go So this is a hot Dutch oven, um, it is very very hot, it's preheated to 230 degrees Celsius. So, take the lid off, lift the dough with its paper. Now, this is where um, we wet the dough and the paper again so we can get the spatula and just smooth out that paper one last time which stops it from getting in the way of the dough and making creases. I'm using my lame, lame, sorry, wrong pronunciation, which is just a um, razor blade over a chopstick. 
I'm going to put just a couple of slashes in the dough. Yeah, these aren't great. <laughs> This is the worst slashing I've ever done. <laughs> You'll have to forgive me. Okay, that'll do. It's fine. It will be what it will be. Okay, we'll put that in the oven now to bake for 30 minutes with the lid on, and then I'll take the lid off and bake it for about another 10 minutes with the lid off. So bread has been in the oven for half an hour, 30 minutes with the lid on. Let's see. Woo! It's pretty good. Okay, so you can see it's risen really beautifully. Um, got a nice spring. I'm going to put it back in the oven now for probably about 10, 15 minutes just to brown up and I'll uh, finish cooking. But I'm really pleased with that. It's a nice, nice, nice result. Okay, put it back in the oven. Okay, here we are for the final video. <laughs> it's getting really late now. Oh no, it's only quarter past nine. Okay, so the bread's done. I'm gonna get it out of the oven and show you the final result. Ta-da! Okay, so there we have it. A really um, beautiful loaf of sourdough bread. Um, kind of a bit of a no-need method, but a really easy method. Um, there's no um, no mess. It's pretty easy. You don't have to use any flour in bannetons or anything like that. I just grab the corners of the paper like that, and the paper is not hot, even though that pot is very, very hot. Pull that out. Take my pot away. Grab my bread and then I just generally tip it over like that, peel off the paper, and there you go. Beautiful sourdough bread. Absolutely gorgeous. It's pretty light, so um, it's pretty airy. It's got a nice, um, crispy, beautiful crust, and that will just be gorgeous to eat. So there you go. That's it. Easy. Good luck. Good morning. Well, it's the next morning and I thought I'd um, uh, cut the loaf of bread just to show you all what it looks like inside. Um, the bread has lost its crunch. It's been a bit of a humid night overnight. It's still got a bit of crunch on the sides, um, but it's, yeah, it's changed its texture, that's for sure. Okay, let's see. Oh, the smell is amazing. Okay, so let's have a look. So the crumb is um, fairly open. That's just about how I like it. I don't like really massive big holes because your honey falls through and you know, I really like um, a nice sort of soft bread with um, a nice open crumb, but if the holes are really massive, that's just not going to work for me. I want to be able to make a sandwich out of my bread. So I'm really happy with that. Um, really nice, really soft. The smell is incredible, and that's due to the sesame seeds. They just add all sorts of beautiful loveliness to um, sourdough bread. So there you go. That's the life. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks.